Welcome back to Heroes Next Door. Thank you all for joining us today. We're doing another station rigs. We're still in Denver, Colorado. We're at their station one, where their technical rescue is. We're going to be talking to one of their firefighter technicians. Uh, his name is Neil. He's going to walk us through two other rigs. Neil, thank you for inviting us in. Mike, thanks for having us. All right, so we talked to Bo last week in regards to some of the trucks, but yep. you work on opposite of him, right? You work on the collapse rescue and yep. tower. Yes, sir. Yep. You mind talking us through what, what those are? Yeah, let's go through it. Okay. Um, so right now, unfortunately, we're in a reserve. Okay. Um, so typically we have um, a tower with a bucket, 100 foot aerial on it. Um, that's a 2011 Pierce. This is a 2008 Pierce with just a straight stick on it. Okay. And the reserves are basically because your truck either got hit by a car or it's out for maintenance yeah. or something like that. Yeah. You have a company, your, your department has the ability to give you a truck while that's getting worked on. Is that kind of what reserve means? Yes, sir. Yeah. So we've okay. got a whole sh uh, shop basically. Okay. Um, the, they work solely on fire engines and fire trucks. Okay. Um, that's their whole job. And so, Thankfully, our rig didn't get hit and we didn't hit anybody. It's just an annual maintenance that they're performing, okay. um, as well as some like wish list things like, hey, can you add this or change this, right? right Make right. our lives easier. It's cool that you have that in the department itself. You yeah. don't have to send it out to a third party. You don't have to send it back to Pierce or anything like that yeah. to get those kind of things done. You have a maintenance crew ready to go and to take care of that. Yeah, and they so, do They do a great job. They take really so good care reserve, of us. So as a reserve, does it normally come fully stocked or do you have to kind of transfer gear? No, we have to transfer all of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not bad on a truck, Okay. right? We just kind of transfer compartment to compartment and it works out really smooth. Right. Um, but when you have to go to, from an engine to another engine, it's empty, right? And you gotta load three thousand feet of hose, right? Uh, yeah, those are those take a little. That's bit. half your morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, do you mind taking us around this uh, ladder that you got today? Yeah, absolutely. We'll okay. start up here at the front. About how many people do you have on the crew that you run? Uh, so we've got a minimum staffing of four. Okay. So we've got an engineer um, who drives, and on an engine he'll pump and. Um, you know, perform engine tasks and okay. on a truck, uh, he'll be responsible for throwing the stick, uh, positioning the rig, okay. and then he'll come up and meet up with us, whether we're searching or venting, anything like that, bringing us extra tools that we may need. Right, and then in your officer seat, do you run captains, lieutenants, what do you normally run? Um, both. Both, So okay. we've got a, a captain for each rig, and they're in charge of that whole rig. Okay. Um, and then we've got a lieutenant who's responsible for each shift. Okay. Yeah. And you guys use a uh, specific terminology here. I was talking to Bo last week. You guys call the guys in the back muckers. Muckers. Where does that come from? So back in the horse-drawn days, um, you would have guys in the back who were responsible for jumping off and cleaning the muck off of the old wheels okay. on the horse-drawn rigs. Okay, that makes so they sense. Were, they were called muckers. They'd clean all the muck. Stick with tradition. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. All right, in the driver's seat, so what do we got? Um, pretty standard driver's seat. Um, where you drive the rig, you can engage the aerial PTO and the generators. Okay, and so from the, from the driver's seat, obviously lights and sirens and yep. radios that are up here. Can this uh, put the ladder up from here, or do you have to go to a platform? No, to do that? so you have, we'll have to go to the platform to raise the stick. Okay, um, but from here is where you engage that that PTO. Okay, okay. Yep. So just like an engine, you're going to actually take this out of drive gear yep. and then put it in its own PTO. Yeah. And back here are where the muckers are. Yeah, this is where the work happens. Okay. Um, so this is where the two back steppers are, um, and we've got all of the, the stuff back here that we need as far as getting ready, uh, whether it's a fire or a tech rescue call. Okay. Um, so this is a dual purpose truck also. It's not yeah. just a, an aerial for firefighting. You're talking tech rescue, like yeah. collapse, like yes, sir. Uh, yeah. high, high angle up. You know, what kind of rescues are you doing there? So Tower One is responsible for um, all high angle rope rescue calls collapse calls, trench rescue calls, okay. and confined space. Okay, okay. Yeah. It's kind of cool to see that. When we were talking to Bo last week, having a dual purpose rig uh, kind of makes sense in your area. Yeah. And you know, we don't see these. Usually a normally a specialized vehicle that they're gonna have to bring to the scene. You know, either I take the engine or I take the rescue. 
combining those makes it pretty efficient. Yeah, and so the engine, um, as you saw last week, they're working to combine both the dive rig and the engine into one kind of rescue pumper. Right, right. right. So everything they need is on that rig. Um, we can't do that with the collapse rig because it's a semi truck and right. it wouldn't work. Right. Um, but we've got everything on here for like high angle rope rescue. Okay. Um, so all of us on the back step, as well as you know the officer and the engineer, we all have harnesses. Okay. Right? So I've got my harness set up already. Um, so if we go on an elevator rescue or or we get a high angle rope call, okay. um, I can get suited up in the back of the rig, come off, grab our rope bags and go. Okay. Uh, if we get a trench or a confined space or a collapse, then we take both rigs. Okay. So the two of us from the back step will jump over to the collapse rig. Okay. Um, like today, I'll drive the collapse rig, uh, and the other back stepper will sit in the officer's seat. Okay. And the three of us, essentially, because the engine will come too, right. uh, will respond to that call. All right, all right. Yeah. Now you talk about the harnesses. I'm a rock climber, yep. you know, just for a hobby. I have just a small harness that I wear. I got my little chalk bag and yep. that kind of stuff. So do are, I. Are you, wear, yeah, are you wearing the full harness when you're on the job, or do you just use a smaller harness? Uh, we've got full harnesses, um, you know, waist and chest harnesses. Okay. Uh, so this is our engineer's compartment. So he's got all of his gear, his air pack, um, as well as some tools that he may need to use, um, a can, elevator bag, yeah. um, some hand tools, his hook. Okay. Now tower yeah. one is, is different in that we're, we're the high angle team. Um, and so we have a compartment, which is this one, dedicated to rope. Okay. So we have, Wow. we have, uh, this is Mike's our engineer's personal bag. Okay. So that typically doesn't live in there. Um, and this is our elevator bag. This would live in a different compartment over here on our front line, okay. but due to space, um, it lives in here. So we've got four main rope bags, two mains and two belays essentially. Okay. Um, and then all of the other rope right. accessories that we need, a Stokes bag, um, an Edge Pro bag, like edge protection yep. and anchors. Yeah. Um, and then everything for our Vortex, Harken winch, um, spec pack, sked. Okay. So yeah, yeah, and having that on a tower actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah, uh, you, you have the ability to go up very quickly yes. uh, rather than putting it on a kind of in, on an engine or anything like that. Yep. So. Now, about how many feet uh, do you have in each of those bags? Is that three hundred foot? Three hundred foot. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So that's yep. awesome. And so we've got uh, they're almost mirrored, right? Like bags one and two go together. Okay. So you've got a main and you've got a belay, and then bag three um, is a redundant main. And then bag four, we have set up as a four to one. Okay. Um, Pre-rigged, ready to go. Okay, okay. Yep. And four to one is basically uh, in order to give you mechanical advantage. Correct. Yep. Very cool. Yep. So about how many calls do you guys run? Com actually, compared to your, you know, what we did last week, I didn't yeah. ask Bo. Yeah. About how many calls do you guys run? Uh, so last year, Tower One ran 3,300 calls. Wow. Um, and the engine, I think they're, just shy of five or just over 5,000. Okay. You're pretty close. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But Tower One goes for quality over quantity. Right, right. Okay. Good in here. So that's pretty much it for this compartment, right? Yes, All sir. your ropes. And then you said saws were in this one. Saws are in that one. Okay. Now, being a ladder truck or a tower, wherever we're calling it, uh, you have multiple different saws. These are roof saws, right? Uh, yes, sir. Yep. So we've got uh, two chainsaws and two rotary saws. Okay. Um, both chainsaws have a Raptor chain on them, so carbide tip. Um, this is gonna rip through roofing material pretty pretty good. Yeah, um, yeah. Both our Cirque saws, we have an abrasive kind of dual purpose blade and then a, a warthog blade, if you will. Yep, yep. Now you have cribbing too. Do you guys do rescue out of here or is that just more for shoring up different things? Yeah, that's more for like car accidents. Okay. So it's shoring you, up if we have uh, parties trapped or- you know, Would you respond me. to car accidents with this? Uh, oh yeah, Okay. all the time. Okay. Do you have like the jaws of life that people talk about? Other side. All right, let's yeah. we'll keep we'll, going we'll, around. We'll get there. All right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so. This is our RIT compartment. So we've got um, our RIT bag, 30 minute RIT bag. Yeah. Um, we've got a large area search rope that'll come with us. Okay. So we can get out as well and make it easier if we have to retreat, at least somebody can follow us in and they already know where we've been. Right, um, and many of our viewers, we've talked we've talked about it in the past. RIT stands for Rapid Intervention Team. Yes, That's the safety of your own fire. Yeah, saving our own. You're saving yep. your own, yeah. Uh, we've got a fan, torch, and some lights, Cord Pro. Right, 
Hand so tools. The ejector fan or positive pressure fan, yeah. I noticed you still using uh, electric versus the uh, battery powered. Yes, sir. Okay. Do you have a generator that runs off the truck? Yep. And to run those, or yeah. do you, how do you, you don't plug it into the residence to run those? So we've got a junction box in the engineer's compartment that we went through. They okay. can pull that out, we can plug it right into there. Gotcha. Yep. Okay. And we've got other rigs on scene um, that we can plug, plug it into as well. Cool. How long is your stick up top this, on this reserve? This, the, this reserve is 105 feet. Okay. Ladder compartment, so a 35, a 24, two 16s, a 14, and a 10 foot attic ladder. Yep. Um, our usual complement on our, on our front line is a 35, two 28s, two 16s, and a 10 foot attic ladder. Gotcha. So a little bit different complement on this one. It's an older rig, but these ladders, so this is one thing we do not change over. Okay. These ladders live on this rig. Okay. Now I noticed the control panel here. Is that to put out the riggers? Yep. Yeah, okay. so we'll flip that up and you can control putting the outriggers out. Okay. Um, and then you have to switch it over to the aerial to engage the pedestal up above. Okay, okay. Yep. Awesome. This is our airbag compartment, if you will. Okay. So we have, typically we have 12 airbags. Um, these are high pressure airbags. Typically we have 12 of them that live on this rig. Okay. Right now we only have 11 because we have a, a big 70 ton um, that won't fit on here. Right, so that right. one's not on. So our rescue companies, we have two rescues. I don't know if you've been to those. We did, we did an episode uh, a couple of weeks ago in regards to rescue one. So yep. they kind of talked us through a lot of this stuff. And I thought it was also very interesting that you guys in the city of Denver only have really two rescues yep. that cover the whole city. Yep. You know, where I come from, we got to rescue in almost every department, you know, yeah. across the board. It's almost too much resource. Yeah. Uh, but it, it, it's efficient. It works. It does it, work. And it was pretty cool to see. Kind of split the city in half. They each have their own response yeah, yeah. areas. And that was a beautiful truck. Brand yeah. new 2020, I think yeah, it was. Yeah, so. it's brand new. Super nice. Awesome. The cool thing about this rig um, is this is, this is, we like to joke, it's the city's tower. Okay. Because with it being on the tech rescue team, we could have a structural collapse way out east by the airport. This rig is still going. Okay. Um, it could be way down south for a trench call. Right. This rig is still going. Awesome. So, yeah. super cool. So uh, this is the station you want to work at? I think so. <laughs> uh, in here we've got a grip hoist. So, um, what's a grip hoist? So this is going to be like a, essentially a come along on steroids. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, in here we've got some hydrofusion struts. Okay. Um, as well as some hand tools, boogie boards for swift water because, um, again, if the engine goes on a on a water rescue call, we're going to go with them as well for support. Okay. Now, are you all cross-trained across the board? So yes, you sir. can jump on either or, so yep. maybe you get a sick out and you know maybe Bo couldn't make it and they need to fill the shift, you can come in and fill that shift. Correct. So yeah. you have the dive training. So I was training. on the engine for about three years before I came over to the okay. truck. Okay, so be, to be at the station, do I have to have my dive training, I have to have my high angle rescue yes, and all sir. that kind of stuff to work at this station? Yes, sir. That's, yep. that's awesome. Yeah. So, did um, you learn that on the job or did you need that before you got here? Um, I learned it on, on the job. Okay. Yep. So I got dive certified on the job here through the, uh, through the department. Um, and then we put on a tech rescue class okay. actually for our members only. How long you been on the job? With Denver, I'm in my seventh year. Okay. Well, thank you yeah. for your service. Uh, thank you. So. Thank you. All right. So what do we got next? Uh, well, this is what you were talking about earlier. So here's our extrication ah. equipment. Okay. So we've got our power plant here. Um, cutters, spreaders, ram. Okay. Um, some more cribbing sets up here. So right. if we get an extrication, our engineer will try to position the apparatus, position the truck so this is on facing facing the side of the accident. Right. Um, right. Both back steppers will jump out. We'll each grab this. Right. Go to the, go right. To the car. Um, then another little saw that we got here that's pretty handy. Right here are okay. Some so more struts again, yeah. being in a reserve, things don't quite fit as well as they should. Okay. Um, this is a lot more organized on our front line rig. Right. Okay. But so struts, right here we've got 
Um, you know, air chisel, we've got a pack hammer in here, telescoping ladder for elevator rescues if we have to right. take somebody out of the top of the elevator. Okay. Um, we can... I've seen those actually used on the roadways too, like a tractor trailer was on its side, you had to go up and actually dike uh, yep. the trailer. You can actually telescope that up and get up on top of the tractor trailer. Yep. So yeah, that's what's in this compartment. And that brings us right, kind of right back around. Yeah, that's truck one. Now, the, to finish this up, we have a very special rig right next door to it. Something that we haven't seen before. As I was talking with yep. Bo last week, uh, he definitely said, you know, I saw it and I said, this is an 18 wheeler, but it's, it doesn't have a tank on the back of it. Yeah. Can we take a real quick look at that and show let's us all the stuff on there? Let's look at it. All yeah. right. So what do we have here? This looks like a tractor trailer. Uh, and it essentially is. Okay. So this is our collapse rig, as we like to call it. Okay. So this rig is set up for all of our structural collapse, confined space, and trench rescue calls. Oh, okay. What kind of, is this a Kenworth? Is this a Pierce? Yes. Kenworth. Kenworth, okay. Yeah. Okay. Wow, this is an absolute big 18-wheeler. Do you need a CDL to drive this? Uh, you don't, not for, not for our department. Okay. Um, okay. We have a driving program, so everybody gets certified on either an engine, usually first and then a truck um, and then a tower is a different certification from that okay and then we have a whole nother certification for this collapse yeah rig. basically learning yeah. how to drive an 18 or the rescues right because you were at rescue one yeah enormous rig right um, so right. we need a separate driving class for that okay and this is a, a kenworth front end just like you would see you know going to walmart and carrying stuff around yes sir awesome yeah all right so you apparently got a ton of stuff in this that's yes. why you need this kind of truck right yes all right, we'll start from the cabinets, kind of work our way around. Is that okay with you? Absolutely. All right. So this one's pretty pretty cut and dry. This is, um, you know, here's your uh, outlet that we were talking about before. Yeah. Right? This one has a bunch of them on it. Okay. Um, as well as some breathing air on this side. Okay. And then on the other side, there's a tool air. Okay. Why do you need breathing air on this truck? Um, they're not going so, underwater. No, but for confined space. Okay. We'll utilize this um, right. for our air cart if we can hook that up. Okay. Um, so the rule of thumb for us as firefighters are over on the East Coast and where I've been trained, anything below, I think it's five and a half feet, you should be on air. We yeah. just just put an air pack on, but you have a, a complete reel to kind of do that same job. Yeah, yep, and we have an air cart as well as like, um, we call them sabas. Okay. Right, so that's for our confined space breathing. Okay. Um, and we'll also monitor the air. Okay. So if it's, if it's a, trench call or a confined space, our hazmat team will come with and they will actually monitor the air. Awesome. If the air quality, uh, if those monitors indicate that we need to be on air, okay. we will. Right. If they say that we don't, then perfect. might as well not. Yeah. So this has a compressor and everything. Yes, sir. It's not, you know, cascade bottles or anything like that. No, we can't fill bottles on here. Okay. Okay. And right next to it is? Uh, we start getting into some tools. So um, some hand tools down here, some shovels, some little trench shovels. And then we'll so pull the this little shovel out. here, I got a yep. you know three year old. I think he would absolutely love working on the fire department oh. and have his own little tool. Tell him to come on down. <laughs> Tell him to come on down. So getting into some collapse stuff here. Wow, um, we've got a bunch of uh, Paratech shores. Okay. So yep. these are the ones that you, you set up the shoring on each side of the trench, and you're going to span that distance so you don't have that collapse to come back in. Um, some of them we could use that for, absolutely. Okay. Um, but these are going to be more for structural collapse. Okay. So we can build breakers, raker shores out of these. Okay. Um, we can build temporary shores out of these while we, you know, assess the damage in the building. Right. And then decide what to build for a more permanent shore uh, in the meantime. Right. And this goes either side. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this will pull out either either direction. Okay. Um, up top here we have some more airbags. These are going to be your. Um, your low pressure, high volume airbags, as well as some um, some other, other miscellaneous okay. things. Okay, perfect. Shut this one too. So getting into some breaching and breaking for um, structural collapse um, stuff on that in that realm. So a big Stanley uh, generator. This is a hydraulic pump, basically, okay. for some of our tools. Yeah. Um, we've got a bunch of breakers right here. Uh, this stuff is all for confined space, typically pulled off the other side. Right. Big tripod okay. um, uh, 
for so the hydraulic pump well. that you would do you, you run saws off of that do you yep. run jackhammers off of that what do you normally would run so with a hydraulic we've got a couple saws right here that we can run off of it right so this is a concrete essentially a concrete chainsaw gotcha and then we have a concrete circular saw as well okay that we can run off of okay off of that generator right and it looks like you got a bunch of wood up in here too. What's the wood normally used for? Um, so these are essentially miniature trench panels. Okay. We have full size trench panels in the back. These ones are cut in half. Um, just if we need a smaller, okay. a smaller panel, we at least have four in there that we can start utilizing gotcha. and get in place. Okay. Yep. And then up here, um, I talked about how the engine and the truck cross train yeah. on a water rescue call we're the support for the engine on a collapse trench call anything like that confined space the engine is support for us and they have their roles on a collapse call they're the cut team okay so up here we've got a bunch of um, cut tables and things like that that they're gonna when they get on scene they're gonna they know to start dumping this stuff out setting up their cut station okay so when we come to them and say hey we are gonna build this and it needs to be this long they already know what to do yeah you don't really don't think about that as far as a fire department rescue it's almost like you guys are also carpenters so you got to kind of create a, 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 a lincoln log kind of structure yep. to make it safe for people to go into and you have to have people to do that so having a setup station outside say i need you know five and a half feet by 38 inches you know yes. whatever you can do that right here out of this truck correct yeah, that's awesome. That's yeah. absolutely awesome. Yeah, it's a really amazing rig with a lot of really cool equipment. Right, right. So in this cabinet, I noticed you have a lot of options. You have a, a battery powered spreader or cutter. I'm not quite sure what it is. Yep. You have hydraulic and gas all in one cabinet. Yes, sir. So. Yep. So this is um, a combination cutter spreader okay. tool. Um, and then, yeah, like you said, we've got um, our hydraulic chainsaw, our hydraulic rotary saw, and then a regular chainsaw, another concrete cutter's edge saw. So this one will operate, um, it's gas power, but it operates with water. You need water okay. as well for this one. Right, right. So we got a bunch of little wildland hose up here. Okay. Um, and then two other chainsaws back there that are set up for a Pomeroy or like a core drill. Okay. So for the water, do you get that from on this truck or do you, that's where you, the other support vehicle comes into? Yeah, so if we can get it off an engine, plenty good. Um, but we do have um, pumps here if we need okay. water pumps. All so, right. Uh, in this other, this compartment has a couple torches in it. Okay. Um, oxyacetylene, um, petrogen torches, stuff like that. Yep. We've got some uh, control boxes in here for the airbags. Um, as well as um, search cameras. Okay. So different search cameras to look into. So you can holes. do the pole search cameras yep. and stuff like that. Yep. Yep. Um, back here is the the lumber. Oh wow. So when we talk about building shores on scene. Okay. Um, we've got a complement of four oh, by let, fours. Let the viewers come in and kind of see that. Yeah. So we've got four by fours, two by fours, two by sixes. Um, these are our trench panels. So we have six trench panels. Um, two of them are ready to go. They've got ropes on them and, and they're ready to drop in. Um, two of them don't have ropes and then another one, another set needs to be built. So most of your wood, is it reused once you've actually used it on a scene or do you replace it each time? We replace it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And what are the numbers? I see you got 12, 16, 16. Uh, these, are, these are lengths. Okay. So we know that these are 12 foot, so these are 16, 16. That's a lot of wood back there. Yeah. No, no wonder you have to have a tractor trailer to kind of pull it. Now you have that cutting station, so you can take out a 12 footer, you need a four by four 12 footer, and you can cut that down to size to yep. make your structure. And we've got more wood and pre-built stuff up, up top as well. Okay. Do you so. guys go to school to learn kind of uh, carpentry or <laughs> is that, again, that's kind of learned on the job? Yeah, so we have that that um, tech rescue class that we put on okay. um, for members on our department, um, and that goes over all of the different disciplines. Okay, but we do send guys to like a structural collapse technician course. Okay, uh, which is beneficial. Here's a bunch of power tools. Yeah. So drills, saws, saws, all that stuff. Right. Yep. Okay. Um, so do you normally use like a bucket of screws to screw stuff together, or do so you... we've got. Nail guns, 
So more saws. Yeah. Here's part of that cut station, right? Those dudes will get out the okay. the, the miter saw here. We've got a bunch of different other saws. Um, two nail guns here okay. that we can use with the tool air off the rig, or we've got a bottle right here okay. that's set up so we can use the, Do you, the you bottle. Use standard like 10 penny nail gun kind uh, of thing? 16 and 8. 16 and 8, yep. okay. And so that's that's a lot of the structural collapse stuff right there as far as building. Right. And then we can get into some some more shores. So these grays are gonna be what we'll use for trench. Okay. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And so we've got a whole complement of different shores. Just love the fact that you got a tool belt ready to go. Just, yep. just put it on. Your carpenter, this is what we're doing you today. Got, you got go all to your work. stuff in there. Your yep. T squares and everything are right in yep. there. Yep. Awesome. awesome. Yeah, there's and it, it helps a ton. You know, not only in firefighting, they talk about the importance of building construction and knowing building construction and how to build things. But right. when it comes to the structural collapse side of it, it's even more yeah. important. It's cool to see because one of the things that we've learned as we travel across the country is many of the firefighters were kind of the jack of all trades. You know, some of us know how to weld. Yeah. That's kind of my specialty. Some of us do carpentry. Some of us do plumbing. Some of us do electrical. electrical yeah. And you're kind of getting all that on this kind of truck for that specialty rescue stuff. You gotta kind of know it all. Yeah, um, and that's why the team aspect works so well because I may not know everything, but I may know something about this. Right. right? You know about welding. So if we've got something that needs to be welded or cut with a torch, like uh, on the ground. they might come yeah. over here and, and help us out. <laughs> right, here. right. So, and here we start getting into the confined space. So we've got our two hose reels. Each of these are 200 feet long. Okay. In this bag right here, we've got um, another 200 feet. Okay. So 100 foot to go on here and 100 foot to go on here. So we can go 300 feet. So these are to into... hook up to you to breathe with or is yep. it for your air tools? Nope, so this is our breathing air. Okay. So that these, these reels will hook up to our air cart right here. So we can take the air cart to wherever we need. Okay. Bring the reels to wherever we need and then we can hook everything up. We've got all of our um, harnesses back here for confined space as well yep. as our breathing apparatus and, and everything so else. your breathing apparatus that's completely different than what you use for structural firefighting correct sometimes yeah yeah depending on the space okay um, if we're going into you know a big vault down below and we've got some room but it's considered a confined space because there's one entry in and out okay we can maybe wear our our scbas off the rig okay um, but if it's a confined space and we have to tunnel through uh, then yeah we've got because the masks profile. are different, different, right? Or masks is... are the same. We'll, we'll wear a low profile um, SCBA. Okay. Basically. Gotcha. Okay. Yep. Um, but we'll typically breathe off of these okay. first and off of our air reels first. Okay. And then those other bottles are kind of emergency backups. Okay. Yep. okay. And you guys normally run Scott's? Yes. Okay. Of course, yeah. I'm wearing the uh, MSA hat today. But... Oh, that's all right. <laughs> we got MSA stuff too. Gotcha. Um, some more, so this is the other side of that um, gold Paratech yep. compartment that we pulled before. Yeah. And then these are just different feet. Almost like uh, appliances to get in a hose. Those are the, the connectors to stabilize the... Yep. Yeah, and we got a whole bunch truck. of stuff here. Come down, okay. Right, so um, different feet that we can put on the shores. Yeah. So we can secure them. So that fit on a to, four by four. To the for header example. and sole, yeah. correct. Yep, different nail pads. That's Stuff awesome. like that. Yeah. You want to go up top? Yeah. Let's, let's take a ride up top cool. or take a look up top and see what, yeah. what you got up there. So we get up here, big step. All right. So this is the, the top side of our collapse rig. So I like how you use a little giant to get yourself up. And yeah. And then it. we can take it off if we need it on the call. Right. Right. Um, so these are some lip ridges. So we'll use these for trench okay so we'll set up um some glue lambs that go across the trench and then these will run parallel so it gives us a stable platform to walk on and so you're not stepping off. on the edge of the dirt or yes. whatever in there yep and yeah. then these just live up here full time right um and then in these these are all just pull-up compartments and we've got um some high expansion airbags in there okay and then as we continue to move down we get into some more collapse stuff so oh. we've got um, gussets and shims and wedges that we all 
almost that preformed stuff. So you don't have to take that 12 footer and yeah. make it. You have it all already ready yep. to go. So we've got our gussets and, and our shims and wedges ready to go here. Right. Um, we've got some big six by six kind of cribbing okay. here as well if right. we need. And then, sorry, I'll see if I can scoot here real quick. We've got some suction hoses for trench, um, and then the other compartments way down there, we've got more Paratech struts, and then we've got some pre-built um, like single T and, and double T okay. headers and stuff. What would you use for suction? Is it like that suck the dirt out of there versus <laughs> yeah. use a shovel? Yep. Okay, okay. Yep. Yeah, uh, that's again, something I'm, the lay public would not know that you have those kind of things. I figured you shovel down, and then when you get close, you use your hands and then go from there. But yeah having a suction unit to get some of that dirt and move some of that out of the way. So we don't have that on on our on this particular rig, but we've got vacuum trucks that we can call. call yeah. Um, and we have these hoses. So you'll be preset, ready to go, and they yep. just show up and you go for it. Yeah. That's awesome. So, uh, And it looks like you got a ladder system that goes off the back once you're up here, if you're going to be on a scene for an extended period, rather Correct. than climbing up between the cab. Yep. Yeah, so we can deploy this out and back. Okay. Um, and it works works pretty good. The only issue is you can't get into that rear lumber compartment when that ladder's down. So gotcha. got to try to get all your stuff off first. <laughs> all right. Yep. All right. This is an absolutely beautiful truck. It's something that we haven't had a, a up close and personal look at. So thank you for bringing us yeah. and showing us around. Thanks for coming. We by. appreciate your service. Thank you. Uh, once again, for you guys, this is Heroes Next Door. We just did a station rigs with Denver Fire Department in Denver, Colorado. Thank you all for watching. But before you end, you got to hit that subscribe, hit that notification and that like button so we can keep bringing you more. We're gonna hit that 100,000 subscriber mark. With your help, we're gonna do that, and we'll see you again next week.